Hi, and welcome to Home Assistant running on Synology in Docker. Today, we will be installing Mosquito from scratch. We will do this to improve security and add ability to handle usernames and passwords. We'll start in 10 seconds. Before we go any further with today's video, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined the channel. Thank you very much, your support really means a lot. And now, let's get cracking with the video. As there were some changes with the Mosquito, a couple of weeks ago with the update to version 2.0, I started to play with it a little bit more. But that was not the only reason. The other reason? is that I'm preparing my system for a rollback or from moving from Hess.io, Sino community package from Frederick, to the Docker version. Why? I think that in future we will be skipping a lot of issues and problems that could possibly pop up. Last week I prepared a video with a fix for MQTT for the people that are using it inside Docker. Then I started to play a bit more with it, and I found out that there is a, let's call it that, a issue with the Synology package, or Eclipse Mosquito working on Synology, in regards to setting up usernames and passwords. And because of that, I decided to create a new video that would help everybody, but especially those working on Synology. We will be installing the same Eclipse Mosquito package, but we will be using a little bit different version. This one will be open SSL. I don't know why, but it seems that other versions do not work well on Synology in regards to handling usernames and passwords. So my first task, of course, is to remove my current Mosquito, and then we will go to Terminal Server and start configuring everything there. So let's start. I removed Mosquito Container, let me open Putty. You can use, of course, any other terminal application you have. I have a lot of them here, but this time I will be using this one. Login. Password. Okay, let me clear this. And now we will go to our uh, volume one Docker folder. If you haven't previously installed Mosquito, the next thing you have to do is you have to create folder for the files. We have to create four folders or one folder and then three subfolders. We'll start with the main folder, mkdir for make directory, mqtt. Next folder we have to create is the config folder. So mkdir, mqtt, config. arrow up, remove config with data, and log. If we now go to MQTT folder and list, we should see here three additional folders, configuration, data, and log. Next thing that we have to do is we have to go to configuration folder, cd config, and inside configuration folder, let me clear this, we will create a new file new file will be called mosquito with double t m o s k u i t t o dot c o n f and inside you have to add a couple of things before we go any further all the lines that i will be writing inside the configuration file are used to get mosquito up and running i wouldn't call that the best configuration type especially not in terms of security if you want to enhance your security I will be posting in the description of the video a link to a GitHub page where you can read more about access lists and also how to configure a specific per device or per user restrictions. This, what I do here, will make your MQTT work and will allow you to create usernames and passwords. And that's it. Let's press insert to start typing and then persistence. with the flag true, because we want to keep the register of the data that has arrived to MQTT. That way the system that are currently not online can also pick up the data. Now we have to specify the location, so it will be persistence. 
location. And here we have to specify the location. Bear in mind that this is the internal container configuration, so the folders will definitely not look the same as we have them created previously. It will be Mosquito, with double T, and then Data. And later on, we will map this Data folder inside container with our newly created Data folder inside Mosquito on the Synology or any other Linux machine. Next, we want to create a log destination, log dest for destination. It will be file, because we want to keep the log inside the file, and then mosquito, log, and mosquito, log for the name of the file. The third thing is the password file. This is the file that keeps data for all the usernames and passwords for our system. This is not mandatory, but I would definitely recommend it. And as you will see later on, it's very easy to edit it. So we will type it here, disabled. And later on, when you set up your accounts, you can just enable it. Password, underscore, file. And it will be mosquito, config, pw file. You can name this file whatever you like. I just usually use pv file for password file. Next, this is something that has been added in the Mosquito version 2.0. We have to allow Anonymous. And we will set this to true because previously it was true by default, but now it's false by default. And also bear in mind, later on, when you enable the password file, you can set this to false or just completely remove this line. And the third thing we have to set up is Listener port 1883, and you have to type here the IP address of your host. This is not the internal Docker container address, this is the IP address of the host where the Docker is running. 192.168.1.201 for me. In order to save this, we just press escape, double colon, write, quit, and exclamation mark. If we list, we will see that now there is a Mosquito configuration file present in the folder. And we need to do this because we cannot start Mosquito without this file. Let me clear this. And now we can start typing the very long command to get everything up and running. It will be sudo for super user do docker run. We will give it a name for the container and it will be mqtt. Next, we want to start it in a detached terminal mode, minus itd. Now we will specify restart command. We will type here always. The other possibility that you have here is to specify, for example, unless dash uh, stopped. This will always restart container unless you stopped it by hand. For the network, we will be definitely using host one. And because of that, we do not have to specify ports. I know that previously I was always specifying ports, just a reminder for everybody what ports are used, but I also know that people were getting annoyed with that. So no more ports here. And now we have to specify all the volume mappings. First, we will map our folders. V for volume, then volume one, Docker, MQTT, config with the internal folder config. Next, we have to repeat this for the data and log folder. Let me do that quickly. The fourth mapping I will be specifying here is something that you probably do not have to specify if you do not want, but just to be on the safe side, I also do a direct mapping for the configuration file. So this looks like this. Volume, volume one, docker, config, mosquito, conf for configuration file with the mosquito, config, mosquito, conf. Maybe you've seen some tutorials that only specify this and they do not map the configuration folder. But since later on we will be using the configuration folder to store our passwords, I want to have that map too. This is how I have it, and this is how it works on my system. The last thing that we have to do here is to specify the name of the image that we want to download. And this is the biggest difference between my previous installation videos and this video. 
Once again, we will be using Eclipse, but this time we will be downloading a specific version called OpenSSL. So Eclipse, Mosquito, and the version is OpenSSL. It should by default download the latest available version of the Mosquito, but let's go to that OpenSSL branch. And yeah, I do have typo here, so let me quickly fix it. I'm missing MQTT folder here. Okay, everything else looks okay. And let me press enter. And if we now go back to our Synology or whatever Linux system you are using to install this Docker, and as you can see, our MQTT is running. If we check the log file, you can see that everything is working and connecting to our system. And since we do not have any kind of user credentials here, all the systems that are using this IP address with the port 1883 can access it. But as I said previously, in this video, I want to show you how you can add a username and password to enhance the security. No, this will not be top of the line security, but A, it will allow you to restrict access to the MQTT server, and B, if you group devices, you will exactly know by the name from the log file what device used what username to access the system. I use it myself to identify what systems are working and what not when I'm troubleshooting. So to do this, there are two ways. You can do it here from the Docker UI inside Synology. For that, you will need to go to MQTT, terminal, launch with command, type ash, A-S-H, and the terminal will open inside MQTT. Just don't forget to click here. You would need to go to Mosquito folder, and here we have the same three folders we created on our Synology. We would go to Configuration folder, and now you have a couple of options. Remember, the same thing we do here, we can also do in Portainer. Let me show you. In Portainer, go to Containers, open MQTT, go to Console, select here bin ash, and press on Connect. Change to Mosquito folder, List, and here also you can see Configuration, Data, and Log folders. Let's go to Config here. So the same applies if you are using Portainer or if you are using Synology Docker UI. Because not all people that watch this video will be using Synology, I will be continuing these steps inside Portainer. Okay, so there are a couple of ways how you can do it. The first way is the easiest way. What you would do, you would create a file. Let's call it like pvtest, because we will not be keeping it. Press insert to start typing. And then you would just type in username, double colon, and the password. So something like this, username, password. In each line. So for any additional user, you would have to add a new line that would start with the name itself and would add with the password for that user. Second, password, third, password. Then you would save this file. It is now here. And what you would do is you would type in following. Mosquito. Pass WD minus in capitals U and name of the file. For me, it will be pbtest. And the system, what will do, it would open up the file look for the usernames and passwords, and then create encrypted passwords. Well, if everything works correctly. Let's see. We will open the pbtest file. And as you can see here, you still have visible usernames, user names, but the passwords are now encrypted. If you see here error called killed, meaning that between those two lines, mosquito and the next line, you see healed, killed with the exclamation mark. It means that you didn't watch the video correctly and you didn't install the open SSL version of the Eclipse Mosquito package. And this is the error I was talking about. Let me remove this file. And let me show you additional way how you can add passwords. 
you have to be in mosquito configuration folder we will type in following mosquito pass wd minus c for create name of the file will be pv file this is the name that we specified previously in the configuration file and here we will type in the username for example i want to add the following user called hass for has when we press enter we will be prompted to enter password and then retype password and that's it if we now look inside the file pv file for password file you can see that we now have added user has with the password which is great but what if you remember that you are missing some additional users that you want to add that's no problem the following line mosquito pass wd minus b name of the file is pv file and now we can specify here both username and password username will be uh, i don't know home and the password will be assistant when we press enter and go back inside the pw file here you will see that we now have additional user called home with the encrypted password like this if at any point you forget the password to reset it just remove the line with that user so if i would forget the has password i would need to remove this line and then use the command b as here to add it to our mqtt let's switch back to synology let me list the contents of the folder here so you can see that we added files and you can do everything we did in portainer also here in order for us to activate those usernames and passwords we have to go to our mosquito folder so this is volume one docker mosquito configuration folder open our mosquito configuration file and just uncomment this line don't forget to press ctrl s to save it close it and you need to restart mqtt so what happens if you do specify username and password like we did and there are still some systems that do not have username and password set up no problem if you remember in our configuration file we'll still have this line allow anonymous and that means that all the systems that have username and password will be checked against the password file while other systems that do not have username and password will still go anonymous and this is it for this home assistant running on Synology in Docker video I know that it was a bit longer than maybe some of you wanted but I really did want to go to a couple of changes especially on the OpenSSL front and also to this time show you how you can use user credentials for the MQTT adding user credentials for the MQTT is really a minimum and basic step because our system is still running without the SSL so once again check out the link in the description of the video to repository where there is a better configuration of MQTT using the access control list or ICLs if you still have any kind of a comment or a question in regard to this video or any other previous video you can always find me on the discord server the link is down in the description of the video or you can leave comment in the comment section below if you still haven't subscribed please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified of future updates and i'll be seeing you next time until then bye bye and have fun